Okay, so this little video is going to be about the nitrogen cycle. Can we get a bit of paper central? There we go. So, uh, nitrogen cycle, not quite as straightforward as the carbon cycle. Not because it's not straightforward, it really is. It's just that you need to know more terms. So, I know, I can refer you <laughs> to Quizlet. And you need to know the names of bacteria and you need to and they've got proper, you know, proper binomial names and you need to know them and uh, at least the genus. So, you know, that can cause issues and I think one of the ways in which you could learn it is potentially just write it out again and again and again and again. So again, <coughs> we've got our inert form of nitrogen. So this is nitrogen gas in air. And one of the big issues with the nitrogen cycle is that that gas is inert. So for example, we breathe it in, 78% of the atmosphere we breathe in is nitrogen gas. And we just breathe it straight back out again. Uh, it's a slightly less percentage because um, we're replacing, we're making more water than we had in the uh, air before. Uh, but it's a completely inert gas. It's, it's really difficult to get it out. Ask a chemist, they do this harbour process thing, loads of really energetic uh, stuff. So our plants can't use it directly and the animals certainly can't use it directly. And the only thing that can use it directly are bacteria. And so what bacteria do, and it's again it's particular sorts of bacteria, is they take the nitrogen gas in the air and they fix it into ammonium compounds. Uh, we've got our ammonium compounds and this is still inorganic and you do need to know the two bacteria, the two types of bacteria that do that and they are called rhizobium and you need to be able to spell this and that's found in soil and particularly uh, in symbiosis in root nodules of legumes and the other one is azotobacter and you need to remember to put the oto in the middle azotobacter and they're found in the soil so, now we've got our ammonium compounds into the soil, you think, yay, we're off, ready to go. But we need to do something with those ammonium compounds to make them into the form that you know plants take them into. So, we need to do a bit of conversion here. <clears throat> and it's a two-stage process. So the first stage is to make our ammonium into nitrite. And again, be careful because it's only one letter different from nitrate. And the bacteria that does that is Nitrosomonas. Sounding not very certain now. I was before I started the video. Someone else. And then further conversion by nitro. Factor into nitrite. I'm sorry, nitrate. See what I mean about being careful. Now that overall process is called nitrification, and it's not rocket science but we've taken a hydrogen containing nitrogen compound and added oxygen to it so this needs oxygen it's an aerobic process the nitrogen fixation actually takes 
place much better the enzyme that does the nitrogen fixation works best in sort of anaerobicish conditions. So um, in this symbiotic relationship, one of the things that the plant does is it provides sort of almost anaerobic conditions and azotobacter has a really high respiration rate so it uses up the oxygen from around it. Now once we've got the uh, nitrogen to this lovely form of nitrate we can then do absorption into a plant We can pass that along a food chain. Obviously, I'm not going to draw mice this time. Um, and of course, then we're going to get death and decay. And our decay organisms, our saprophytes, are going to release ammonia, which is going to be converted into ammonium compounds. So. This represents decompose, decomposition, and that's going to release. So these are saprophytes. We're talking bacteria. We're talking fungi. And they're sort of doing deamination. They're using the keto acid for their own respiration, and they're releasing the ammonia into the atmosphere. Now, obviously. If it was just that bit, it could go on indefinitely, but we've got this taking nitrogen out gas out of the air, so we need another process to put some nitrogen gas back in or we're going to kind of run out. And so we also have the opposite of this process, where we're taking nitrate out of the soil and putting it back into the air. Again. We need to know the name of the bacteria. This is Pseudomonas. This is a denitrifier. So the process is denitrification. Bacteria are called denitrifiers. And this happens in uh, anaerobic or waterlogged soil. So if a soil is waterlogged, all the air spaces are filled up with water and they're sort of anaerobic. So things like peat bogs do a lot of denitrification um, and therefore, because they're taking a lot of nitrate out of the soil, that soil is less fertile. So let's just put this process over here in. So this is nitrogen fixation. So that already looks complicated enough, however, you also need to be able to interpret information. So for example, if you've got a waterlogged soil, you might get carnivorous plants, so they're sort of the... Um, <coughs> so our carnivorous plants, things like sundew that you find upon the moors. So carnivorous plants gain nitrogen. By digesting insects. So they digest them, they get the amino acids out, and they can use that instead of nitrate uh, if there's not much nitrate available. There's also this sort of idea of agricultural practices that we need to be aware of. So, in agricultural practices, we're often looking at making the conditions more aerobic. So, in agriculture, you've got ploughing so that you've got aeration. You've got drainage to reduce water logging. And of course, 
We're talking about using fertilisers, remember our N NPK fertilisers, to put more ammonium compounds in. And then you've got, you know, if you've got nice aerobic conditions, then the they'll convert it happily to nitrates and in fact some plants can use ammonium compounds. Um, synoptically, obviously the absorption of mineral ions, you need to know about that, uh, happening by active transport across root hair cells. Um, I can't think that's it really.